Welcome back to At Home with Roby. I'm Patrick McIsaac, president of Roby Electric, along with Trent Haston, president and CEO of the Roby family of companies. Scott Dunstan is in the house, Trent. In the house. Scott's a friend of mine, yeah. I think oh. you've only met a couple of times. Now that, now that the sports talk show is over here, they have the dog house so we're over in, here with the, with 1110, so now we can say we're in the house. He's in the house. Hoo, 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 hoo. I didn't say that. Hey, Scott. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Yeah, Thank good. you for having me today. We good. appreciate it. Glad you could be here. So, Scott, you are the president of the Dunstan Group, which your your specialty is branding apparel, merchandise. I'm sure I'm getting this all wrong. Kind of kind of give us a rundown about your business. What, what exactly it is that you do? We provide platforms for your logo. So uh, whether it be apparel, a golf ball, a, a custom koozie, or a full-blown uniform for, say, a hospital or something of that nature. So like a um, uniform for an electric company? I think so. We know a few guys over gotcha. uh, Roby Electric or something like that. I mean, you, I'm rolling my eyes over here. You provide a f- platform for your logo. Absolutely. Man, so promotional you're taking merchandise my is brick the, and mortar analogy. I tell everybody I'm a cinder block and a two by four guy. Don't take me far. You're right at home with me, man. That platform, that chest. Yes, I'll put sir. it on your chest. Let's not make this on too complicated. Yeah, I like <laughs> it. So, he, so, so you're the swag guy. Absolutely, That's what swag I heard. guy. I didn't know. I, we, I didn't know we had been paying you a bunch of money for a while, and then you were at the office one day, and they introduced us. Well, the the products we provide to you all, uh, in turn, give you swagger. There we go. I don't, I don't need that to have sw- swagger. We have no swagger. Tr- oh, neither well, Trent nor I. What's we need to do a better some? job. But yeah. I don't have much. Well, Scott, let's talk about this. So you, you you started this business right from from the ground up. You're an entrepreneur, and on your website, you talk about. You know what it's what it means to you to be an entrepreneur, which is important. I know we've had these conversations before. So take us back through the history of the Dunstan Group and, and sort of how you got things started and kind of where you are now. So I, I think so. We're we're coming up on a ten year anniversary. However, I've been in the business for seventeen years. Right. Uh, initially, the first eight were with my family business, and uh, my uncle was looking for a way to retire. Sold the company, um, and. I knew the industry well, and so it was it seemed like a natural progression to start my company and and, and plug forward in that fashion. Um, I would say one of the, the 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 entrepreneurship or the drive behind it is is essentially the freedom of choice. So, you know, in in recruiting and retaining talent and looking for people, I want to provide that same thing to our group. Um, so that was that was initially my my first entrepreneurial spirit and drive. Really? So, so how, how give us give us your ten year rundown? How you where did you start and where are you at now? And how many businesses you work for and such? Do you keep track of all that stuff? Well, a, a little bit. I, I went to college. <laughs> we call it, we call that metrics. Metrics in, on this radio show. Okay, okay. metrics. I want to know some metrics. Okay. Some well, started in two thousand two thousand eight. The the family business was sold, uh, and then I started this company right in the crux of the uh, down economy. Uh, but at the time, there was very low overhead. Now, eight years later, we have a little more overhead, which in turn creates an extreme amount of motivation. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those two things directly correlate. Uh, but along the way, we 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 focus strongly on the community. We focus strongly on relationships. We do the right thing in every single scenario, or try to, and and we feel like long term that that the business sort of follows that. Um, and and that's where we focus. Uh, of course, the dollars have to make sense as well. So that's we, good. We all need to make a living. So I extrapolate from what you just said that if you want to be very successful and you're listening at home, go take on a lot of overhead, and you'll be <laughs> yeah. successful. I have a little story about that. So growing up, you know, we're contractors. So we have a couple couple little rental houses here and there. My dad had a couple, and uh, you know, he's from the school of where if you want to buy a rental house or wanted to buy anything thing you, you'd, you'd set your goals and work for 10 years and save and save and save and then you would buy it cash versus why america is broke today because everybody says i want that and i want it now and they go get five credit cards and use every one of them to the max and buy it and have instant gratification then when the house falls apart they still owe all that money so sure. And I don't think they're buying rental houses either. But when I was young and dumb and thought I was very smart in reading all these books, which he used to say, stop reading those books. He liked me reading the books. But uh, 
I said you, he he wouldn't collect rent. He let he was tired, you know. He was tired. He worked all the time. He had the burden of Andrew Roby on his shoulders and the burden of me on his ankles. And uh, and I said I said man, you need to do a better job collecting rent. I started collecting rent for him, so I guess he wasn't that worried about it. But he uh, my my solution was you need to go take out debt on these houses so you can have Ernest to go collect rent. He said, "Boy, you're crazy." <laughs> he said, "You just don't understand, do you?" He said, "Every he said that's what we live to take away." But I thought that was a funny story. Absolutely, and, and I agree with what he says. Buff, Buffett says a lot of that. He says, "You know, the freedom of the mind is worth so much. Uh, you can't even it put is. a monetary number on." It. Well, and something you said, Scott, too, is is that it's easy to say, but it's hard to do. And, and he said, "You do the right thing, and you have integrity." And I have a story about that. We, I think, probably the first time I ordered ball caps with their logo on the front from the Dunstan Group. Um, they were supposed to be ready. I think it was a Wednesday, and, and I called your office, and I was all excited to get our new ball caps. And I went down there. Or, I'm sorry, I called the office, and um, uh, w- one of your fine young ladies in the office said, well, Scott took a look at the hats, and they didn't look right, so he threw them out, and he's making you new ones, so it's going to be a couple more days. And you probably don't even know that I know that. But I thought that was really impressive, and that resonated with me, that you, you took a, a – it was like 24 hats. You took a loss on those hats to make sure they were right – on a small order, which I think is really, really incredible, because it's everybody talks about doing the right thing. Everybody talks about ethics and integrity, but you lived it in that aspect through us, which was cool. Well, what he's really saying is the next time, don't throw those 24 hats away. Give them yeah. to him, and he'll cancel his order. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, we can well, live see, with we've a learned little, that trick Nothing's there. perfect yeah, in we, life. We want, the, we want the returns that aren't right back. <laughs> I'm sorry, he recycled those hats. He didn't throw them away. Patrick, I think you got told a business truth by his gatekeeper is what happened. You know? I don't well, he must train her well. we got this whole thing wrong. He's over here turning red. He's well, like, man, do unto others as you want done hats. to you. And we're consumers, too. We buy. Right. And, and we just wanted to be treated fairly. We want everyone to make money. That's why we're there. We need to support our families. Um, you, you do the right thing. You go to bed at night without any guilt, and and that's important. To that me. is very important. Yeah. And uh, we we love talking about the golden rule on here. You just said it, but uh, the, we got this little place we like to eat called the Golden Egg. So it's now the Golden Egg. You just said the Golden Egg. Nailed it. Eating that's the golden it. rule. That's but it. that is good. It, it, it's kind of like. Uh, you know, in the construction business, when you're working on somebody's house and you know they're going to come home from work at night and, and inspect what you've done, if you put up a piece of mold and it's not not perfect, that's the first thing they're going to see. Rip it down before you leave and eat it so that they don't come home and go, man, this is a little crooked. That's what I remember about Andrew Roby. And you've done the same thing with, with your example with Patrick. That's, that's great. You guys believe in the branding, and uh, it's obvious. You see your trucks and people all over town. You go to a lunch spot. You see your guys in shirts looking professional. Um, and, you know, that, that we believe that as well. And that is uh, the, you and, and other companies like you that believe in branding are, are the perfect clients for us because we see the value in it, and so do you. Well, it's not easy. I mean, it really is. And I think some some smaller businesses and it, it sort of take it for granted that oh, I don't I don't need my truck logoed or I don't need to wear a shirt with my company logo on it or I don't need a sign in the front yard that says that hey, this is who's doing the work. But I'll tell you, I mean, it, it really makes a big difference. I, I, I'm in a small group in town, Nary National Association of the Remodeling Industry, and we had a meeting uh, Wednesday night of this week, and that was the focus: is how, how do we better brand ourselves? And it's sort of like well. Let's logo a vehicle. I mean, that one little thing can go a long, long way. Uh, we talk about this on this show all the time is is one of the biggest referral sources we have, and it's no secret, is our, is our trucks, our vehicles. Um, and they're branded a certain way for a reason. And there's something this is – we've talked about this probably at least ten times on the show, but branding is extremely important. And what you do, I mean, you brand you brand everything. You give me a pen, it's got your logo on it. Your, your notebook has your logo on it. I'm surprised you're not wearing a logo today, but you're wearing a pink shirt – and that's for a reason. That's what we're going to talk about in the next segment. But but you're right. I mean, branding's huge, and you do an excellent job of it, and you're also very good at, at teaching others the importance of it. Absolutely. And you're on here because, of number one, we like to have entrepreneurs. We like to have people we enjoy doing business with uh, to come and talk about their businesses and talk about their, their trials and successes. Uh, but we also love charity, and we love co-branding our brand with charity and, and polishing our diamond. So... Uh, you're on here for that reason, so will you stay with us for another segment and talk about what you hang your hat on there, Mr. Charity? Sure thing. All right, stay tuned. We'll be right back. 